going ahead, we come to the diseases of the subcortex, that is the group of dementia syndromes. So, the main dementia syndrome, the most famous is the Alzheimer's disease. This image gives you a comparison between the degree of atrophy seen in the Alzheimer's patient as compared to a healthy brain of a normal patient. Alzheimer's disease is a neurodegenerative disease characterized by generalized atrophy of the brain, predominantly of the temporal and parietal lobe. Of the temporal and parietal lobe are predominantly undergoing atrophy even though you can see it is general in nature but dominant atrophy seen in parietal and temporal lobe is a feature of Alzheimer's disease. Let me demonstrate this to you on MRI image. You can see clearly that there is excaviodilatation of the ventricles. This is what we call excaviodilatation of the ventricles where you see that it looks like the ventricles are dilated but correspondingly you also find that there is prominence of sulci and gyrus. That means this is a feature of cerebral atrophy. Cerebral atrophy is present which causes dilatation of the ventricle with prominence of the sulci and gyri. And as you can see on the SPECT scan that there is in reduced uptake in the temporal and parietal lobe a classical feature of Alzheimer's disease on MRI. So you can expect an elderly person, a male person or a female person coming to you with forgetfulness, dementia component and corresponding MRI. So we describe this image as that of generalized atrophy predominantly of temporal and parietal lobe suggestive of Alzheimer's disease. The next MRI is of the next dementia syndrome which is frontotemporal dementia. We have discussed in theory class that Alzheimer's is characterized by generalized atrophy while frontotemporal dementia is characterized by focal atrophy also called localized atrophy. As the name says here the disease is restricted to the frontal and the temporal lobe frontal and the temporal lobe leading to localized atrophy. You can see the classical MRI that here there is atrophy of the frontal, atrophy of the temporal with preservation of the parietal and occipital, preservation of parietal and occipital lobe. This is the feature of frontotemporal dementia. So you can expect a 40 to 50 year old gentleman coming to you with antisocial complaints. The hallmark syndrome associated is the Capgras syndrome also commonly famous as the delusion of doubles which is seen associated with FTD that is frontotemporal dementia. So this image should be able to diagnose MRI showing localized atrophy of the frontal and temporal suggestive of frontotemporal dementia. So this is about the two MRI sequence of dementia, primary dementia. But always the differential of dementia is the normal pressure hydrocephalus. Bringing us to the next image of NPH. As the name says, the prominent feature on this neuroimaging is dilatation of the ventricle. Grossly dilated ventricles are seen. That means there is hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus. But correspondingly, if you look at the sarcai and gyri, what has happened to them? They are pressed against the cranial vault because the pressure in the ventricle, it is normal but the ventricle is expanding in size leading to pushing of these sulci gyri to ad adhere to the cranial vault. Hence, there is actually less prominence of sulci and gyri. Less prominence of sulci and gyri. And this is called effacement of sulci and gyri. 
So in normal pressure hydrocephalus, the MRI shows the MRI shows that there is dilated ventricles with effacement of sulci and gyri. Dilated ventricles with effacement of sulci and gyri is a prominent feature of normal pressure hydrocephalus. The classical triad of normal pressure hydrocephalus includes ataxia, dementia and urinary incontinence. Taken down, ataxia, dementia and urinary incontinence. So, a middle-aged person, the question will be of a middle-aged person coming to us with the triad of these signs with the corresponding image given to you. This is classical of normal pressure hydrocephalus. Going to the next image, we are now going into the section of neuroimages of the spinal cord. I again would advise you to go back to the theory discussion that we had had about the spinal cord. Review the spinal cord anatomy so that we can understand these disorders better. Direct neuroimaging visualization may be incomplete without understanding of the theory. So let us go to the series of spinal cord disorders. MRI is the gold standard to identify spinal cord abnormalities. So we are going to do MRI images of all the disorders starting with syringomyelia. Syringomyelia by definition is abnormal and progressive dilatation of the central canal of the spinal cord. The central canal contains the CSF. The CSF is appears white on the MRI. So, first let us identify what is normal. So, if you see this black structure, this black structure is the normal spinal cord. The black structure is the normal spinal cord. This is the posterior part of the spinal cord. This is the anterior part of the spinal cord. So, this in the center is the spinal cord, black color spinal cord. On both the side, the white outline is given by the CSF. The white outline is given by the CSF. The white outline is given by the CSF, which is present in the dura mater. So, what we can see in the center? In the center, we can see another hyper intensity in the center, which is marked here as syrinx, hyper intensity. Now, you can question me that why it is not inflammation, why it is not infarction, because hyper intensity on the MRI could be either of them. But if you compare the intensity of the CSF and that of the syrinx, they are iso intense. They are of the same intensity, suggesting that this middle of portion of the spinal cord contains the same fluid which is present at the outline. When you get both as the same, this tells you that the center content is the CSF which is diagnostic of syringomyelia. To understand the theory, the most common level of the syringomyelia is the upper cervical cord and syrinx is 50 to 80 percent associated with Arnold Chiari malformation and congenital in nature. So, this is MRI of syringomyelia. So, you can expect a clinical scenario of a 20 to 30 year old male coming to you with suspended cape anesthesia, coming to you with dissociate anesthesia that is affection of one modality of sensation and sparing of the other. In syringomyelia, the spinothalamic tract sensation is affected with sparing of the dorsal column sensation. Hence the name is given dissociate anesthesia. And when you see this image, you should be able to identify the disease correctly as syringomyelia. Let's go 